So, three, two, one, clap. And I've done that wrong. I lay it again. You did the same as last time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, My brain. I love that was in the outtakes. That was so funny. Uh, no. Right, let's try again. And then we'll just clap on clap. Not clap after clap. Three, <laughs> two, one. Welcome, dear listeners. This is episode 113 of the Devon Dice podcast, recorded on the 21st of December, 2023. <laughs> In this podcast, we're going to the classic yearly Christmas special episode. Woo! Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Joel Wright, host of this podcast, and joining me on this, he dominated on the Devon Dice Board Game Arena Heat Championship. Yes, it's Sam for Strappen Freeman. Howdy, howdy, howdy. He's the only person on the pod who hasn't played Clank. It's Nick. Get off the show. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> I've I've played one. <laughs> I've played one clank thing. <laughs> We've had. Uh, uh, we were going to have. Oh, poorly, uh, Lewis. He's got man flu. He couldn't go to his work's Christmas do, but he's actually tucked up in bed. He cannot make it. So it's unfortunate. It was going to be a great show with him on. It's now just going to be a dull, straight to the point show. <laughs> we'll get our coach, Nick. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, come back, come back. I'm sorry. Anyway, so yes, we have a little bit of a change. Well, we're not actually having a change because Nick's just filled out the script with loads of news and stuff like that. Um, but we do have a bit of a bonus. We will be looking at what games we want under the Christmas tree what games we would like to get, and what else we've been doing this year, as well as board gaming. So, um, Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. A whole load of stuff. Um, so in the quick news, and Nick's just filled it out. There's lots of news. So Nick, take it away. I'm going to read it very fast because it's going to be quick. <laughs> so, first on the list, uh, Zev Slashinger, who people might know as the original founder of Z-Man Games, um, and was the director of board game development at WizKids until June. Uh, he started up a new company called Play to Z Games, um, which will include on his board of directors he's got uh, Stephen Barnacore, who used to be president of Stronghold Games, and Jeff Engelstein, who people may know as a well known board game designer and author and the original host of Ludology podcast. Um, yeah, he spun up this new company to do um, what he effectively used to do at Z Man, um, and they're starting off. The first thing they will debut, which is planned for a Q1 Kickstarter next year, uh, is a re-release of, ironically, an old Z-Man Games title called Ascending Empires, and this will be a Zenith edition, it's called. And this is a flicking 4X game, which I have not heard of before, I don't know the original one, uh, but it's this. its subtitle is Flick Your Way Through Space in an Epic 4X Sci-Fi Experience. Uh, so mm. that sounds like it'll be right up uh, Zev Street there. So yeah, well, good luck to him, that sounds exciting. Yeah. Uh, next on the list, um, a an expansion for Forest Shuffle has appeared on a lot of online gaming sites to pre-order, uh, without any announcement from the company or any page on Board Game Geek or anything. I can't find anything else, but uh, a number of at the moment, a number of UK sites. I'm not sure if there's any others worldwide, but they've got them listed for pre-order for planned publication some point between January and March next year. Um, so you can have a look at that. It's called Alpine Expansion. It's a mini expansion because it's about half the price of the original. Mm. Um, so I don't think it'd be a huge number of cards in it. But well, extra stuff for Forest Shuffle sounds exciting to me. So definitely. I've well, when that one. the um, cards were leaked accidentally onto Board Game Arena, I believe. Or yeah, they had they some were testing some cards. Put on the, they were alpha testing some. They said they were changes. But yeah, they were, they were new cards effectively. So they took them down quite soon after that. Yeah, shame. Um, we haven't seen any... Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to find out more about that. Definitely. Over to you, Joel. Um, yeah, uh, Quacks of Quinn and Bird is getting a dual edition, so it's just two player. Um, and you would think, why would they need to do a dual edition? It does. It looks like there's a lot of changes to the components um, to yeah. make it more yeah. dual related. So um, yeah, if you like your two player games and you like Quacks, it could be one. To yeah, it's a popular shelf. popular thing these days is to do two player spin offs of bigger games. Mm. Um, and they seem fairly popular 
So yeah, all, all the best to them. So Divinius is a, it's not a Kickstarter, it was a game found um, backed game. I was a backer. I loved the idea of it. It was a legacy campaign-ish game where you put stickers on, change dice, things like that. It looks quite exciting. The, kick, uh, the game found fundraiser done very well. It is hugely late. We just suddenly got an update now saying that um, some the UK is actually shipping now. Some people in the UK have actually got the notice from Zatu saying their their game is being Ooh. delivered. The only issue is the app will not be released until January. You can't play the game without the app. Yeah, <laughs> classic. Uh, that's the trouble of doing an app development at the same time as printing a board game. Oh yeah, That's and really uh, on top to it off of that, you can only play the core box with the app, and t- up until March when they release the rest of it. Oh, so man. this really sucks because, as I said, the game's hugely late, and it's like, well, it's, it's this state couldn't the app have been actually ready to go by now, kind of thing? But, you would have um, thought there is. I mean, if they've oh, delayed it, it sounds like they've had a problem with the the app and had to. Get in I some emergency changes. A very ambitious game that they were trying to put together. Mm. Great concept. I love the idea of it, but there's like a massive story of multiple paths it can go, and I just think it's it's been through development hell. Mm, um, yeah. And so yeah, there's a lot of disgruntled backers, especially people like in not Canada surprising. that are not going to get their copy until March, June, maybe July time, I believe. Um, wow. And so, yeah, they'll be like, well, yeah, by the time we get our game, actually, the app might actually be fully working by then. But like, uh, yes, UK game, <laughs> UK backers are going to have a game that we can't use because the app won't be ready. So, I don't know. It's a... Uh, yeah. I'm excited to get it. How bizarre. But... Yeah, they look... The... Amazing artwork in it. It's really yes. nice. Um, so yeah, hopefully. yeah. Unfortunate situation. But at least they're <laughs> being upfront about it all. And this is it. This and is saying it. everything. Um, and so yeah. Uh, and then you have a bit. It's over to you. Lot. Uh, yes. So um, Garfield Games um, did a YouTube video an announcement that they tend to do every so often. They'll do a video with all of their new things coming up. Um, So three uh, of the main games that Garfield Games will be publishing in the near future. Uh, Three of them are uh, The Anarchy, is the first one, which is a one to four player game with 3D castle building mechanics, which uh, sounds interesting. That sounds a lot of fun. Do like to add a bit of 3D fun construction into games. Um, We don't know much more about that. There's there's information on Board Game Geek about it if you want to look at more detail. Um, It's got a fairly heavy weight to it, four out of five on Board Game Geek for the weight of that one. Um, but it sounds good. Uh, the second one is uh, Scarabre, which is currently number one on the board game geek hotness. <laughs> and this is a resource heavy game set in Neolithic Northern Scotland. Um, and it's about it, resource gathering and creating shelters and feeding and clothing your people, etc. Um, so it sounds like a, an interesting one. <coughs> um, and then the other one is another one in their South Tigris series called Inventors of the South Tigris where you get to invent, build, test, and publish your ingenious devices. It's kind of a card-driven uh, tableau-building type game. Um, again, heavy weight on this one. This is a 4.08 out of 5. Uh, sounds like a quite an intense one. Um, but they're mm. always fun to see, those uh, Garfield game ones. Um, and there is one more we'll mention in the coming soon section for crowdfunding, because that's not a Garfield publication, Sam pointed out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm a stickler for facts. Breaking news. Do tell us. Breaking news. Breaking <laughs> news, folks. It's on TV as we record the Christmas University Challenge. And there's been a round on the Spiel des Jahres. Oh, so I bet I none now... of them got anything. How many uh, actually knew I... what it was? Well, exactly. I now need to go and watch that as soon as we finish recording because yep. I want to see how well I do. Crowdfunding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crowdfunding. We've got one item in there. Um 
And it's not even a board game. It's not even a board game. <laughs> they put it on here because yeah, I found this. they know I would like it. Yeah, this is a video game. Uh, this is called Trash Goblin. Um, and it's, its tagline is Power Wash Simulator for the RPG crowd. <laughs> and as we know, uh, Joel is a big fan of the Power Wash uh, Simulator. And um, ironically, so this is... his nickname is Trash Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, I love it. So this is a, a yes, yeah, this is a little video game where you, you it says it's a cozy fantasy shop sim <coughs> where you discover clean up, cycle, and sell trinkets to all kinds of customers, and that's kind of the whole game. So it sounds very cute. Uh, coming to Steam in 2024, it's about halfway, just over halfway funded, with 19 days to go, 800 backers, um, and I haven't even looked at the pledge level actually. Let's see what the pledge level is. 20 pounds. So 20 for pounds for the game. For Steam key. Which is pretty good. Um, I think um, it was. Or you, if you want all the other stuff, thirty-five pounds to get mouse icon and work yeah. mat and ornament gift stuff and everything. But yeah, not bad. Uh, looks yeah. pretty cute. And we know Definitely. Joel loves them. Definitely looking. Look, uh, I'll, I'll keep a check out on it, but uh, kind of yeah. feel like I need a decent uh, computer to run. Also, it doesn't I don't know if it run on Mac. I haven't looked at it that, so um, that could be a very true a problem. Very true. Um, so yeah, I have to look into it a bit more. Um, and then yeah, coming soon, fun. Storm Raiders. Yep, so this is actually a board game. So this is a design from Shem Phillips of Garfield Games, but this is going to be published by Arcus Games. Um, and this is it's a hard to describe one really. It says race, raid, and salvage across Atlantis to become the greatest Storm Raiders, which isn't very descriptive of what you do. Um, I have watched a bit of a playthrough with uh, Meeple University, played it with Shem Phillips online, uh, with him playing with the physical components. Um, it's kind of got like a, it's kind of got like a Mad Max-ish kind yeah. of Yeah, yeah. It. And it's got a circular board with like a map on it for moving around. It's got some nice, nice looking components. Uh, but yeah, it, it's not very descriptive about what it is. So I'm waiting around to hear more, see some more videos but, on it. But the interesting thing is it's a Shem Phillips design for another yep. publisher, which is, I think, only the Indeed. second time that's happened. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye on that's coming, in theory, in January uh, 24. It's gonna and be one thing I'm, I'm looking forward to with that, just to find out more, is purely because uh, it hasn't been illustrated by one of his, yes. either D'Amico or his brother, I think it must be, mm. Sam Phillips. Um, yeah, indeed. Because I'm fed up of that art style now. It's <laughs> yeah. just, I'm sick of it. <laughs> Yes, you can have a bit too much Miko art, even though it is is lovely. But, but it's kind of the other one is actually is it's all very it's, 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 it's very uh, so, kind so of legacy of you style. And, yeah, and, and yeah, Hadrian's exactly. Ball. Yeah, uh, mm. and it's always like if it's anything like the others, I, I'm almost guaranteeing that both of the Scarabray and the Anarchy will have whatever the board situation is. All the cards will be face on characters looking at you. Yes, uh, in that art style, because that's <laughs> yes, what absolutely. all of their games do. <laughs> that's totally what they do. So I just want something different from, from yeah, the graphics yeah. now. From because the games are always good. It's just I'm fed up with the way they look now because it feels lazy. Mm. Mm. Well, it's not lazy. They're obviously they've got a style. It, yes, I mean the artist enough, obviously but... spends a lot of time creating those cards. But yeah, it is all very uh, I would say samey. Yeah. Um, even though it's they are a bit unique generic illustrations. for their games, I think yeah. that's the trouble. It's, it's for their games. I mean, it makes them generic. very recognisable. Yeah. But yeah, it does make them. It makes you think. Oh, is it just more of the same? In the yeah. gameplay, which it often isn't. But yeah, looks like it could be quite fun. Yep, Definitely. so look for that in January. Uh, apparently, it, it oh, it is on Tabletopia, so you could try and play it on Tabletopia. Oh, nice, yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. Right, just taking my turn. <laughs> I saw that pop up. <laughs> you can talk about if you want to talk about Marikaiba now, if you want to, because it was on my so, quick yeah. Um John and I are playing Maracaibo on Board Game Arena at the moment. We are. Yeah, so I actually played it when it first came out years ago, it feels like now. Um, and I enjoyed it back then, um, but I only played a couple of games of it, and now suddenly it's on Board Game Arena. Um, I think it Alpha. Um, so instantly yeah, invited so. Nick for a game, because Sam was like, hey, no, I'm not playing that. Um, and actually, it took me at least two of the rounds last game to actually figure out what I was actually doing again. Um, and then um, it was like when I, funny. I was watching, I actually saw the end result of it. And I was, I think I was just ahead of you, Nick, in points. 
And then it starts to- adding these points. And I said, yeah, I've got this. I'm in the lead. Yeah. <laughs> and then Nick's in the lead. And I was like, oh, then I'm in the lead again. It's like, right, stop now. That's it. No more points. And then Nick's in the lead. It's like, stop adding points. And then more points. I'm in the lead. And it was actually the guy like, between me and Nick. And then suddenly Nick got loads of points from somewhere. Um, didn't have a major lead at the end. but uh, I think I won only by about three points at the end. It wasn't a huge amount. No, no. You were about 10. Was it I more? T- yeah. That was okay. I mean, um, out of, well, I was at, what, 55 or something. I think I misjudged the influence on the three nations, and that's where you got a lot of your points from. Um, yeah, I, I pushed up on the multipliers on those. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's fun. It's good. But it's yeah, nice, instantly nice started a, se- a, a second game. game of it. So. Yes. Um, <laughs> and Chris is now I, my friend Chris from the game group. He's, he loves Maracaibo, so he wants to play the legacy version, the um, the campaign mode. Mm. So he's gonna he's gonna get. Is the campaign mode available on Board Game Arena, or is it just Don't the base? I think so. Play at the moment. See, I didn't even realise that was part of the game when it first came out. I just thought it was just a standard game. No, I don't think many people did. Um, But yeah, it'd be interesting to see what it is, what goes on with it. Um, Indeed. So yeah. So yeah, if you want to try and... uh, If you like Maracaibo and that, you can check it out. And um, as I said, if you can't get onto the alpha, then join our community guild. I don't know what it's they're like called. It's like a in... group. Are they called groups on Board Game Arena? Okay. I think. Uh, group, yeah, it's a group. So, yeah. yeah. So or just Devon come to Dice. Discord and we'll yeah. send you a link. And uh, we'll get you into a game. Um, and being that, we're now on our second championship of Heat uh, with a full yeah, team of good. six. I'm enjoying that. And I'm not doing very well, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I haven't uh, spun out as in three as races, I alluded, which I'm really <laughs> impressed at. <laughs> as I alluded to, uh, Sam stormed away with it in the last race. Uh, last oh, championship. Was to the point where they hadn't even realised I'd finished because they were so far behind. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm so sure you were behind me on that last corner. I was like, yes, I've got I was this. As well. I and, was uh, before you went through it, and then I got through, and I, I, paid, I had enough heat, just enough heat, to have one heat oh, left so I could it. boost up to fourth gear, and then I just oh. burnt away. <laughs> yeah. So Typical. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know yeah, how Lewis play. Hamilton feels now against Verstappen. It's just yeah, <laughs> but just one win would be nice. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, we're doing our second championship and uh, we're on our first race. And uh, yeah, we're still trying to chase Sam down. He keeps getting away. But anyway, um, might as well do it, Sam. What did mm-hmm. you think of Undergrove? So, yeah, so last week, uh, last pod, you talked about it, and I know that you yawned a bit there, Joel. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was I, I was the same. It was about halfway through the game. I was just like, I think trying to learn the game by BGA is always a little bit awkward because you're playing it in a very disjointed kind of turn-based thing. It's very hard. And I did the same. I sort of scanned the rule book and thought, okay, I'll, I'll probably work it out as we go. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, it didn't really twig until about halfway through or about the third of the way through. I was like, okay, I think I get it now. And by by about two-thirds of the way through, I was like, okay, I, I understand what I'm doing now. And at that point, I actually started enjoying playing it. Um, so I think right. having the understanding of what you're doing is a big, mm-hmm. massive factor of it. Um, I think the other thing as well uh, is, Nick, you questioned whether the physical implementation of the actual board game would, would add something to it, and I 100% think yep. it would. I think yep. having a top-down token-style thing is, is the wrong way to play it, really, without having you know, trying to learn it anyway, because yeah, the, I think the key element of the game is where you're putting the roots out for your trees and placing mm. your, your, your mushrooms. Mm. And if you haven't mm. got that space, it's harder to have that spatial awareness if you aren't sat around the table, I think. Because uh, you can't see yeah. easily where your roots and stuff are. Um, from a colour th- point of view, it was a nightmare as well. Because oh, it would be easier in, in, in person. Mm. They've obviously tried to pick colours that aren't too bad. But right. I think it was blue and purple or something. And it was just impossible for me oh, to tell which yeah. one was mine. Um, yes, they so were very was... pastel colours, weren't they? The yeah, yeah. And, I, and again, I'm sure that's just a representation of the digital version as opposed to the physical yeah. one. I've got a yeah. feeling the physical one will be easier to tell. So... Whether I buy it or not, it's a completely different kettle of fish. But I did enjoy playing it enough to make me <coughs> want to play it again. Um, yeah, yeah. So whether I play it on BGA again or not, I probably will play it on BGA again just to sort of try and cement the how it plays mm-hmm. in my head. But the one impression I got from it by the by the end was okay. Yeah, she's kind of done it again. Whereas 
she's got that strong thematic tie to the mechanics, which I think is the yep. strength of her games so far. Every single one of them has got this really distilled down but thematically strong uh, connection to the mechanics, or the mechanically strong connection to the theme. Um, it's probably yes. a better way to put it, because um, you are sort of you, you you create your sapling, and then your sapling sends out roots to attach to the, and the different mushrooms attached to that, and give different resources to the tree. That's the crux of it. Uh, and yeah, it, it come by the time I got to the end, I was just like, yeah, this <laughs> this actually is a lot better than I expected it to be, um, considering I've got zero interest in mushrooms really. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's it's one I'm going to pay more attention to. I definitely wasn't going to back it because there's no point. It's an AEG game. It will be in retail. Yes. Um, and there's nothing special about the Kickstarter, so there was no point. Um, I don't think you need the deluxe wooden components. I think that's pointless. I think the tokens yeah, are absolutely fine. Yeah, they'll be fine. Because mm. uh, there's nothing Agreed. really special about them. Um, so yeah, I, it's it's definitely a game I'll, I'll be interested in playing again. Hopefully someone else will buy it. Um, or I'll wait till it hits special prices, maybe. Yep. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, it's. I thought it was alright. Cool. Hmm. Okay, that's cool. Alright. Let's get on to the special bit. Uh, so, I put out several questions to the guys. Um, what would they like under the Christmas tree, board game wise? Uh, Grail game, game that you, you wish they would make. So, I mean, that's an open plateau. It's an open box. Isn't it? Yeah, open anything. Uh, expansion they wish that you would make for a game you've probably already got. And then they've got TV shows, movies, books, video games, or what you've enjoyed through the year. So uh, a little bit more structured than last time, because last time was just a bit <laughs> like, let's talk about anything, guys. <laughs> and it just ended up in like, oh, yeah, I watched this movie and this, that. So hopefully a little bit more structure. It's like a three-hour epic, wasn't it, last year? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so we're going to start off basically with the small stocking game. Um, and I think Sam would want to leave his until later on. Um, <laughs> he wants to back reference some, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, small socking game. I struggled with this a bit. Um, and the only yeah, thing I, I could argue think that of... your choice is not small. No. <laughs> it won't fit in a stocking. Because <laughs> I've got lots of little yeah, games. Know, half of his games cost over 100 quid, so definitely small <laughs> in price. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, economical. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Economical stocking game. <laughs> and it's, it, well, actually, it wasn't under £30 either. Um, <laughs> what was I've your talked, choice then? It was, I've, I've talked about it, I think, on the last podcast. No, the podcast before. Yep. Um, yes, yeah, recently. Yeah, because of GridCon, and it's basically Art Society. Um, Mighty yeah. Boards. So, for Mighty Boards, and I enjoyed it that much that I would really like it. Um, it actually came into the shops this morning. So, actually. Oh, did cool. it? Yeah. Yeah. So I've got to remember they put out Meeple's Corner. A, a discount. Code on it as well. Oh, no, now available. That's it. Yeah. It wasn't discount, it was just announcing it. Yeah, All so that's right. now out. Go so it is it. now. Go grab a copy. Yep. Um, so I actually have ordered it and uh, hopefully it should be here before Christmas. So. Mm. So it will actually be under your tree. That's impressive. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm going to try and fit it in my stocking just to prove you lot wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so my small stocking game, um, I put. Uh, before I decided on one, I just put pretty much anything from Travel Games uh, website because they have so many little imports of small little trip-taking games and hard-to-find games mm. that I'd be happy with anything there. But the one I picked specifically was Union Station, which is a game from Travis Hill, um, and it's a little cube rails type stock manipulation uh, game, which is reminiscent of kind of bigger. Um, cube rails and stock games it looks very cute um it's not that cheap on price because it is also over no. 30 pounds but it is an import <laughs> from the us uh, it's 32 pounds um but that's why it's on my list so i don't have to buy it myself someone else can buy it for me put it on the tree brilliant uh but that was my choice union station mm, it looks a bit um 18 uh, xxc yeah, well, it's it's more cube rails with a few stocks in. It's not really as it's nowhere near as complex as an eighteen mm. x but yeah, that kind of thematic. Cool. So next section was a big game under the Christmas tree. Um, so Sam, so it doesn't it doesn't have to fit in your stocking. 
Doesn't have a fitness stocking. <laughs> big, big game. Yeah, you saw oh, and mine, and mine is big. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Castles of Burgundy Special Edition, the Sun Drop Edition. Mm. Um, which, and this is a bit of a curveball. Um, this might come up again in a future episode very soon. But this is the first year I've played Castles of Burgundy because the original version of it looks like absolute dirt for my eyes. I just <laughs> it's just all one yeah. colour. It's just impossible. <laughs> yeah. The I did recently play the 2019 edition <gasps> um, a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, did it In burn protest, your eyeballs? I, with its... I, I was I was kind of like, oh, okay, I'll play it. Fine. <laughs> you might have to. And I was like, you might have to point out which things are which because I'm. Oh, it's yeah. terrible for color blindness. And actually, it was it it was actually just about playable. <laughs> it was fine. Um, but I actually turned out I did actually quite enjoy playing it. So uh, it sort of jumped to being my favorite Stefan Feld game above Notre Dame. Oh yeah. Um, so that's, that's so why good. this one is the large under the tree game. Is and it's a big boy. This is, a, it is, it, it is. It, the special edition is massive. Yep. Fits up really most of the collector's looking. square. Yeah, but it's really good looking. The the colours are much better for me because mm. um, they're much more vivid. Basically, they're not yeah. dirty Euro style. Um, and the sun drop edition has the, the they've all got these little mini, the sort of castle miniatures which don't do anything in the game other than it looks cool. But the sun drop ones have all got the nice um, wash and everything on, and they mm. look really, really cool. So if I had to get, yep. if I had to pick one. Big game. That's the one I probably get right now. Would you? Um, good choice. Nick, good choice. Is that the one you've got, or you just got like? Yeah. You yeah, that's the one got. I had. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We did when we mm. played. We didn't. I don't think I bothered getting out of the minute. No, you didn't. Um, I showed them to you, but I, yeah, I didn't get them out. Mm. No. Well, they, I presume they're literally just where you have the castle tiles. You, you just yeah, you just on it, right? you just put them where a castle tile would go. Yeah, but well, it just um, means it gets in the way, probably. <laughs> it it does. I mean, they're they're different height. There are four different heights of. of yeah castle so you can strategically put them in places that don't block your view but yeah. they will probably block other people's view a bit of what you've got on your board yeah um, which is why i don't tend to use them um, yeah. and if you have all the miniatures then actually that would probably be fine because they'd all look all look really beautiful but mm. i did yeah. not get all the miniatures because that was way over the top really there's more miniatures yeah you can get miniatures for every tile type oh, oh really yeah, it's a whole. Oh it was a whole other add-on that was you know, effectively doubled the price. Oh, they doesn't need that. Oh yeah, forget really. that. Yeah, <laughs> no. but it re it reinvigorated my like. Actually, I remembered how much I liked playing Castles of mm. Burgundy, and actually, your copy was like, oh, this is really nice. And I said, I sat there thinking, I could get this. I could really get yeah. this. And, it to my <laughs> and you can. There is a place I found you can get it, and it's actually quite a reasonable price. Yeah, so. I saw you got it on Zatu, wasn't it? Mm. Shh. Don't good. tell everyone that. Wait, what? There are other other uh, online retailers are available. No, no, don't tell it. Yeah, no, it was definitely not Zato. It was really expensive there. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not on sale either for a very good. No, one. it definitely isn't. Don't don't even look until the new year. <laughs> right, uh, go on the job. What was your what was your pick? So mine is Beast, and it is a beast. Um, so I played Beast, someone else's copy, at their game group this year. Really like this hidden um, hide and seek kind of game, um, and like how many kind of different variations that could be to like different beasts that you are trying to hunt to different people that you can be if you're on the other side, and like of course there was a Kickstarter, lots of add-ons. Lots of you can up it to all miniatures if you wanted to, but I don't know if I'll go for that version. I quite like the acrylic version, um, but knowing me, I probably would go for the miniature version as well. <laughs> um, and then they've also done a Kickstarter, another Kickstarter, actually game found for the expansion, and I really did sit there like hovering over, yeah, back. No, can't afford it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would love to have that as a, a addition in my thing on my shelf. So yeah, yeah, it's a beast of a box. It is another beast of a box. So, but really good game. Really enjoyed it. Cool, looks really good. Uh, so my large under the game tree was Castles of Mad King Ludwig Collector's Edition, and Castles of Mad King Ludwig is a game that I've I really enjoyed playing in the past. Um, I haven't played it a huge number of times, but I've enjoyed every play I've had, even at five players, which took four and a half hours. 
um, but we started playing at about 11 p.m. That was really not a good idea, but we still enjoyed it after that. Um, and this is the the Clix edition. Um, basically, combines a number of the expansions and it has all new artwork on the tiles, which are reminiscent of if people remember the they they did a Polish edition. Um, a while after the original game came out, which had beautiful artwork, and this artwork is quite like that. It's revamped all, all the tiles, and it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, lots and lots of pieces in it, lots of stuff in it. Another huge box, lots of stuff. Um, I, yeah, I'd love to have that. Lots more unnecessary miniatures. <laughs> lots of unnecessary th- miniatures, indeed. <laughs> which makes um, it nice and large, so it fits under the tree just about. It yeah. the whole tree up. Hey, this is this is the uh, this is the push the boat out pick so you know you've got to go for the glitzy exactly. version yeah yeah mm. all the stuff yeah I, I like castles of mad king i haven't played it in a long time um but i, I always quite liked it the only thing I, I i could never get my head around the scoring and i didn't like the zigzaggy scoring <laughs> yes. scoreboard um, that was a bit just, weird yeah so hopefully that's something they've changed in this edition so grail game game that's out there not in print probably never be in print again and we say that and I know every year it, you get a surprise. Never thought we'd see um, HeroScape being reprinted. Mm, and there it is. That's true. Kind of, <laughs> in a way. If it's popular enough. Yeah. And I hope the these will be popular enough to come back around again. Um, mm. So I'm going to go with mine, because this actually links up with Sam's small stocking game <laughs> yep. thing, kind of. Um, my Grail game would be Blood Ball team manager the card game um i used to play this lots back when i was going to like x to game shop and like someone had it and they had everything and it was just so i just remember actually having a great time with it um because it wasn't about scoring goals was it or touchdowns it was basically trying to get as many fans as possible I believe that was what it was. Yeah, it's been right. so long now since it's I've played it. It's about being entertaining. Yeah, it's all about yeah. fans. The, the fans are victory points, basically. And then yeah, yeah and you can being draft. Entertaining in matches. Yeah, and it's the fact you could draft players into your your deck and um, hopefully make a better team than the other one. Or oh, it was just I just remember just having a great laugh with it and um, yeah, just better than the actual Blood Bowl, the actual game. Because I just yeah. find that really <laughs> yeah. random and frustrating. Um, it's very random. But I had no experience of Blood Bowl at all when I first saw it, and I'll be honest, I kind of, I, I got my, oh sorry, sorry, Joel, spoiler, I got my yeah. copy uh, at um, uh, there's a little sh- shop, comic sort of shop in uh, Ottery St Mary. Randomly right. went in there, and there oh, it right. was on the shelf one yeah. day, and I thought, oh, was, I think it was like thirty five quid or something. Oh. I thought, well, no, I'll give that a go. Uh, and uh, I intended to probably give it to one of my friends who I knew was much more into Blood Bowl, um, but we played it, and I was just like, nah, screw that, I'm keeping this. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. Um, and it's still on my shelf now. It's just, yeah, it's a fantastic game. I've, I've got no real awareness of it, but it's it, it kind of feels like it gives you, it's really good at, at distilling the theme of like that, that rough and ready American football-y mm. kind of vibe with fantasy creatures, um, and it feels like you are playing kind of the game but with mm. cards in a, essentially smash up yep. it's like smash up but with blood yeah, bowl yeah. um mm-hmm. in, a, in a weird Pretty way cool. um but it, it works brilliantly yeah so it's such a good game yeah so as shocking that it hasn't been printed more widely because they would have sold loads of those I, I i'm sure it will get reprinted at some point because i think games workshop have got the rights back for all the all that stuff now aren't they i think um, yeah that's the trouble i think it's because fantasy flight was originally the um, makers of it with joint operations. Yeah, maybe with... they've got the copyright of they've got the copyright maybe of the team manager yeah. game. Yeah, and stuff, maybe. but then yeah. someone has actually pointed out because it it just came up again. It's like looking at Facebook and then one of the groups and someone's put up a picture of them playing and said, "Oh yeah, this happened." Blah blah blah. And I was like, "Oh, I miss that game." How much is it on eBay? Oof, no, fine. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's probably like 100, 100 quid or 150 <laughs> No, quid actually, I found a copy um, of, for 50 quid. Um, oh, that's that's just the base game. Yeah, it's not bad, actually. The the expansions are nearly yeah. 100 pounds. I'm really annoyed with myself. In a, uh, not that I'll ever get rid of it, but I'm annoyed with myself. Cause I, my, the thing I always do with my expansions, and I've never learned my lesson, is that <clears> I put everything in the base game box and sling the tr- boxes 
yeah so it's just like i've got I don't have the, space, the thing that would actually make it valuable was gone in the bin yes. years ago so yeah oh so you got the but expansions again, no, as well as have you yeah i've got i've got all the expansions too oh uh... H- hence your stocking <laughs> game yeah, so my my small stocking game, I couldn't think of anything smaller I really wanted. Um, but because Joel put Blood Bowl Team Manager as the Grail game, I thought, well, I'd have the Blood Bowl Team Manager organizer that you can get from like Laser Ox or uh, <laughs> wherever. <laughs> so, so my it's just my base game, but everything fits in the base game box. But it's just a pile of like baggies. So I could really do with uh, some proper organization of it now. So I can, cause it, I don't really like playing with the expansions an awful lot. Um, they're okay, mm. but. The base game stuff is still the best stuff, as it is with most games in my yeah. collection, really. Yeah. Um, but I would like to be able to organise it a bit better, so it makes it easier to just play with some of the expansions. Like the, some yeah. of the elements, is, it, it's actually quite a modular. The expansions are quite modular. Yes, it is. So it's not like you, you can just go, "Oh, we'll play with the vampires and we'll play with the cursed balls and the but dodgy refs." You know, that's all you have to do, and that's fine. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, it's oh, it's fa- yeah, it's a fantastic game. Don't play it anywhere near enough, but. Um, uh, no. I, I must have to check. I'm not sure if I've sleeved everything. I, I I think I decided I was never going to play it again until I sleeved everything because I knew it was actually right. quite a, you know, quite a valuable I game. Think... I want to keep it nice and tidy. And again, I, I want to put it in a box organizer. Yeah. Yeah. I think you need to sleeve it, and I need to come around and play it again. Well, we do need yeah. to have uh, Devon Dice Con <laughs> next year, don't we? I think that's <laughs> we something do. we need yeah. to. Absolutely. We need to do. Yeah. <laughs> we need to <laughs> pop, it's only us pop three. Nick's cherry on <laughs> Clank, and then we'll get Blood Bowl <laughs> Team Manager out. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. That sounds good. <laughs> um, that's uh, the other point. Was someone actually said on the, on the Facebook because I actually posted and I said, "Oh, I wish I picked this up when it was available." I was so miss it. Um, someone said, "Well, Fantasy Flight could actually re-release this, but using an um, Android Netrunner IP um, because they had in that something called like Metal Sports or something like that." Um, Okay. Which could quite, I think it could quite easily be rethemed into that. Oh, you wouldn't be able to have vampires and orcs, but you could retheme it into other fi- yeah. other kind of genres in the future. Um, and yeah, I don't see why. Yeah, I, I think it would be, it's that. quite an adaptable design. I think it would. Yeah. It would. There's ways to do it. I mean, you could do it with like rollable. Yeah, it's you know a rollable version. Yeah. Would be pretty similar. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, shall I go next? Um, yeah. So my Grail game. Uh, so this is actually an expansion. Um, so another classic Stefan Feld game is Die Speicherstadt, uh, which was re-implemented as Jorvik, um, probably a little while ago now, about five years ago. It was uh, published as Jorvik. Um, but the original Speicherstadt from 2012 had an expansion called Kaispiker, which was only in print for a very short time. Um, it has basically it doesn't exist, and now there's there's barely any copies anywhere. Um, if you don't spend under a hundred pounds to get it, um, and it's really it was only a fifteen pound expansion to begin with. Um, it, the expansion was included in the Jorvik reprint, but the Jorvik one rethemed the whole thing, and I I've played that version. I just don't like the theme on it. It doesn't really work as the theme. Um, ironically, prefer the original. And the Schweikerstadt is a, a what is it? It's it's a canal um, in Hamburg where you're yeah, delivering goods yeah. and things. Um, and so the Kaiserbike is just a different way. But it's it's a fascinating game of bidding for cards, and you're bidding mm. for contracts and then goods that you're trying to fulfil the contracts and other cards that give you extra points for certain things you do. Uh, and then the expansion just gives a a second way to bid for another set of cards with a completely different bidding mechanism. Really, really clever, and I love the game. It's great, great Stefan Feld. Probably my second favourite Stefan Feld game. Um, mm. and yeah, I've never been able to get my hand on the expansion because it's just either it's ridiculously expensive, um, or it's not in English or whatever. Um, well, I've just I found one on the Geek Market for thirty-five pounds. I'm going to have to look at that. That's a Dutch edition, but <coughs> have a look. Um, yeah, I think that would be. No, I, I don't think they will ever reprint it because it's not a popular enough game. No. And they did the Jorvik reprint, which had it included. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to have that at some point. That'd be really nice. Hmm. That's my Grail game. Cool, yeah. Um, I really struggled to find a Grail game. I've, I've basically got the stuff. I've had Grail games in the past, like I had um, 
uh, Glory to Rome Black Box Edition and stuff like that, and I just I've kind of let them all go. I've not really there's nothing in my watch list that's really kind of that's really a Grail game now anymore. But the one thing I've been struggling to get hold of is the four character, uh, not four character, the extra character pack for Looney Tunes Mayhem, uh, which was a Simon yeah. <laughs> game. Um, sorry, come on. Come on, game. Um, Come on. Which was basically like a little skirmish game with Looney Tunes characters, and Looney Tunes is my favourite cartoon as a kid. So um, Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner particularly, uh, and that. So when I can't remember what I got, it might have been Zatu Games as well or something. But they, I just decided on a whim one day, screw it, I'm treating myself, uh, and went and bought the Looney Tunes Mayhem uh, base game and the four character pack. Which included Wiley e. Coyote and uh, Roadrunner, um, but the one thing that isn't available anywhere is the extra characters pack, which was a Kickstarter exclusive. Which uh, I, I think is exclusive anyway. Uh, which included the rest of my favourite characters. Annoyingly, Marvin the Martian, mm. uh, Foghorn oh, yeah. Leghorn, Yosemite oh. Sam, uh, and it's just like ah, oh, I really want those. They um, are the ones you want. Oh, yeah, so I, well, Wiley e. Coyote was the main one for me. He's my absolute favourite, but. Um, Marvin mm. the Martian would be number two, Foghorn Leghorn number three. So it's just like, I really, really want those two. Uh, there was yeah. one person selling it on Facebook, one of the Facebook groups, uh, but it was like as a pack with the core game, and she wasn't willing to split it. And I was just like, ah, and I couldn't, I can't bring myself to spend fifty mm. quid on another copy of it, which I'll probably struggle to get for you know get rid of. Um, yeah. So I was just like, oh, I'll let it go for now. So, but the next time if it does come up again like that, I'll probably be like, right, I'll buy the bloody lot and I'll just give the other one to charity or something <laughs> but i really want those characters um the game itself i've not even tried uh so i've no idea if i like it or not but i mean it, it kind of lends itself to a skirmish light skirmish game i think because you're mm -hmm. basically playing these these characters running around dropping acme gadgets on each other and you know trying to trying to be the last yeah, yeah. last character standing or whatever or, or bait you know playing capture the flag sort of style games and that sort of thing mm -hmm. um and i think it would actually work from a thematic point of view but it's mainly just about being able to play with those characters um, is the most interesting thing. Uh, and just as a completist, I just want those extra ones that I haven't got. Yeah. Yep. That's the really problem nice. with um, Simon and their Kickstarter exclusives. It just kind of breaks the market a bit because yeah. people that don't do the Kickstarter and then buy the game just from retail, they're just like, oh, but there's so much I can't get hold of. And yeah. it kind of... Yeah. It, it, quite sours the hobby in that kind of way i yeah. think that's where kickstarter is a bad thing for the industry yeah. or at least how not so much bad but it's a bad thing for the industry when it's done this way um mm -hmm, because it, it prioritizes trying to sell in that first instance rather than having an ongoing business from the product that's being launched mm. um and i think that's that is wrong and it's been wrong for a long time that simon have been doing it for like that forever so i know yeah, that's what the, do we that's, know? that's what that's how they keep their customers um, base up is they always yeah. have the exclusives and people know if they don't do it they're going to miss out on a lot of stuff yeah. I mean you look at all the Marvel stuff that I've got it's like well if I don't back it I'm not going to get this um, and I really like that character and things like that and and yeah it is a shame it's like that it's a shame that they don't even just say well it won't be in sh in normal shops but you can people can always go to our own store and we'll yeah, sell yeah. product from that at a higher yeah. rate, um, just so then the Kickstarter people are not had their nose put out a joint. So it's still yeah. there available, but at a different kind of um, yeah. different market yeah. rate. But no, they, yeah. they they always keep to that slogan: "It's Kickstarter exclusive. You'll never get this again until the yeah, next Kickstarter." Exactly. Mm. And then, but yep, yeah, it is currently in my uh, must-have wish list on BGG. So it's the only one uh... I think that is uh, must-have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought Zachary was going to come for the rescue again because it said, oh, buy it for 50 <laughs> quid. And it's actually the core yeah. box again. Yeah. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Believe me, I've looked. <laughs> so, on to the game they wish they, you wish they would make. I'm going to go straight to Nick because this relates to the last podcast. And if people hadn't listened to the Indeed, last podcast. Indeed, mine's nice and easy. You should just go and listen so, to the last podcast. Last, 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 listen to the last podcast but... about our retheming of Clank. Um, yeah. And I came up with the idea of Clank Cubed, which is a lower decks Star Trek take on the Borg. Um, 
and John and I thought, yeah, this is a great idea. So I think they should totally, totally make that. There's, yeah. There aren't any lower decks themed board uh, games that I've seen yet. Um, so yeah, this would be a perfect time for them to go ahead and grab that IP and then make a Clank version of it. I think it'd be brilliant. Lots I'm of kind of upset you didn't think uh, Lost Valley of the Clankosaurs was going to be the one you wanted to be made. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh dear. Oh, <laughs> classic. <laughs> Uh, uh, Sam, Sam, yours yeah, so is already a game printed. I, yeah, I, I think I must have misread the question when I filled it out uh, in my excitement to fill out all the thing when you said there was a spreadsheet yeah. to fill out. I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, love, I love a spreadsheet, me. Um, and I thought it was games you wish they would remake. Um, right. And uh, so, in the same spirit of that, I think. Down, I'll answer it. Uh, my answer is basically the one I wish they would remake now, and it's Downfall of Pompeii, right. which has never really had uh, even a second edition. I don't think it may have had a second edition, but it was not dissimilar to the first edition, probably. Um, uh, just having a quick look now. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's not. It's had two editions, but they're basically the same. Um, not been remade since two thousand thirteen, so it's over ten years old. Um, but it's a fantastic game. Um, it is great. It's a really That's good a game, game. Uh, and I just think it's ripe for a complete mm. reskin and an overhaul. Maybe tweak a couple of the mechanics mm. and stuff, but it would be fantastic. They could mm. they could yeah. make this really a good. really good game. It would look really. I. It's one of those games I would probably pay the three figure premium for a for a proper, wow. you know, like the Castles of Burgundy special edition kind of thing. You know, because you could have like the really elaborate volcano. Yeah. Um, you know, they've got the thing yeah, with the cardboard really cool. volcano. People put like electric tea light in there or something. Yeah. You could, you could actually make <laughs> a proper, like, rumbling kind of glowing mm. volcano. You know. Um, oh, it'd be so <coughs> good. Restoration Games. They need to get on something like this. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, they've After they've it, done like, Lost Valley of the super... Dinosaurs. Uh, well, the yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. Lost. Well, no. Lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Direwolf did still have got to make Lost Valley of the Clankosaurs. Um, Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, or I do, uh, you know. Devon Dice, Devon Dice presents becomes a publishing house, and we, oh, we yeah. print our own copy. Um, <laughs> Just read themes of Clank. <laughs> yeah. It's like Restoration Games, but we just chuck Clank at everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I, Downfall of Pompeii is is one of those games that I really love. Um, I've kind of. Some uh, Murray and our group's got a copy, so now and again I get to play it, and that's fine. But yeah. I'll never, I'll never say no to playing Downfall of Pompeii. It's, it's just really fun. Um, you can do that, take that sort of stuff, but it's really light. Mm. Take that. Mm. Um, it's just like, well, it makes it work this way. I have to do it this way because it's, you know, it, it's, it's got that that kind of level of of um, interaction, which is just perfect for me. Um, mm, yeah, yeah. But I just wish it would look a bit better, and it's understandable because it's a ten year old game now. Um, well, more than that, really, in terms of the art style. Um, but yeah, they could they could easily do something really smart with it, um, and I hope one day someone does. Mm, definitely. Yep, agree entirely. Well, actually, mine is um, a bit of a remake, and it has a volcano in it uh, as well. So, um, <laughs> and restoration is it one of restoration yeah. games as well. It's a restoration, restoration game. Get on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so mine is technically not out there. But I wish they would do it. And it's basically a big box for Fireball Island. Um, because they, they've done this... It's, it's an okay... It's, I, I enjoy the game. It's a chaotic, fun game. Um, chucking marbles down the volcano and seeing what they hit on the way down. Um, but originally, the Kickstarter came in this stupid, flimsy box that can barely just hold the core game. And then they give you loads of expansions, which you can't get into this flimsy box. And I'm, I mean <laughs> flimsy. They they designed it like that old school board game box that you used to get. It's got like the folding si- sides. It's yeah. Weird. yeah. And ever like when it arrived, everyone's like, "What is this? Why did you do this?" And they came in with a update saying, "Yeah, we made a mistake. We thought we were being." Like classy and going retro, but it was too retro for everyone's <laughs> liking. So it's like, come on, guys, now do a big box version. Even if it's, yeah, it's a Stonemaier kind of classic of a, a cardboard box that's empty where you can put everything in. Um, <laughs> it's just the box, yeah. And also they released a spider 
um, expansion that can't get in the UK. Um, and also, they could also now include better deluxe components than they did in the original one. Because the deluxe components were awful compared to the core box. They weren't deluxe really? at all. Yeah, they were terrible. I actually had to go, because we got uh, the House of Marbles up at uh, uh, Newton yeah. Abbott Way. Um and going out and actually buy decent marbles for the game. Wow! Does it, so they yeah. didn't include the standard bits as well as the so deluxe. they they so they st- included the standard bits were actually better than so they included the deluxe c- components were like extra marbles hmm. that were meant to be like right great but they were rough. I like I don't know that where they all. got these yeah. mar- um, marbles from. Um, and actually, people complain and say, actually, the, 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 the core box marbles are better. And I'm using yeah. those instead of deluxe. And then I just went, oh, I'm going to House of Marbles and picked up some really nice ones that look like fire and look like um, snakes yeah, and yeah. things like that better. So, yeah, opportunity. And I don't know, I don't know whether the game is not high on their agenda anymore because, I mean... Because they have other stuff to... Well, they got other stuff. Plus, also, like you could pick up Fireball Island, the core box from Smith's Toy Store, for like twelve quid or something stupid like that. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it was. I couldn't believe it when I looked. Like, looked is that like, not is the it... that not the cut down version? The race. I think it one? is. I think it is cut down. Um. So you get even less than you do in the core box that you got from Kickstarter because they even renamed it. Um. So yeah, I mean, yeah, but I I couldn't believe it when I saw it. And I was like, "Jeez, is it is that the value yeah. of it?" Kind of thing. Mm. But um, wow. But I love it. I I think it's a great game, and you put it on the yeah. table, and people are like, "What the hell is that?" I was like, "Take a seat." <laughs> yeah. We played it here, didn't we? Um, Azurka, like a final. Uh, we haven't got the brain power to do anything else. Let's yes. Just... Let's do this. And it was like played until like one o'clock in the morning or something ridiculous. It was, yeah, it was yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah. Really, it was. Yeah, it was well. great. So, but yeah, yep, good stuff. Okay, uh, expansion you wish they would make for a game that you've already got. Um, Nick's is uh, yeah. Sam's is really easy. <laughs> <laughs> no one can guess what that answer. is. <laughs> then you haven't been listening to the podcast long enough. But it's not even a joke one. It's not even a joke one. We'll come to it. <laughs> it's quite serious. Um, Via Appio is mine. Um, so this was a grail game up until a point I actually picked it up for a reasonable price. And it's a great game. I love it. It's simple. It's family friendly. Um, quite thematic um, where you're pushing stones off of that kind of tipping point ledge. Mm-hmm. And collecting them and then building the actual Via Appia Road um, from somewhere in Rome to somewhere in Italy. I can't even think now. But anyway, and um, I just wish they had done an expansion for it because I think there could be quite a lot of add on that yeah. could be done to yeah. this. Um, but Queen Games, I think that made it. Yeah, yeah it's Queen, Queen Games. Games and Queen usually do go over the top mm. with expansions a lot of the time. All their Queenies. I'm surprised they haven't said this one. They tend to do small ones, don't they? That's the trouble, rather than big ones. I yeah, guess. but there aren't any... Even, even with this, there aren't even, even any nothing. queenies or anything for it. Because no. it's quite an old game, as opposed to one of the new ones? Yeah, oh, it's yeah. a 2013 release. Yeah. I've so, never played wish... it, but um, it looks my kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, Devon Dice Gaming Day, or convention. Yeah, I'll bring it up. <laughs> it's a yep, great absolutely. little game. Um there is an expansion I wish they would. I wish they would reprint, and that's for Steam Park. Um, oh, my very first game I brought from Christoph at Meeple's Corner. Um, I mm-hmm. missed out on the expansion. I thought, yeah, it'll always be around. Yeah, never live by that rule if you like a game. <laughs> never live by that rule. Always buy the expansions. So, but yeah, ah, it's a classic Steam Park. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick. Um... My expansion I wish they would make uh, is I like an expansion for Artifacts Inc, which is uh, one of the older Ryan Laucat games uh, that he designed um, quite some time ago. When did it come out? Let me have a look. So Artifacts Inc came out in 2014. It came out. Um, it doesn't have the highest of ratings of all of his games, but it's it's a kind of it's a small box ish 
smallish box game and it is effectively just cards with dice drafting and dice placement uh, on the cards to trigger um, the abilities and then you buy more cards and you're building up your little tableau and you're doing some nice little dice worker placement it's a really cute little game um and i think it would benefit a lot from having some Mm. Uh, just, just a, even just a mini expansion uh, would be nice, just to give some some more variety. Um, and the the game had perfect; it was it was variable enough with the cards that came out. But I think kind of you could set it in a different kind of um, maybe add in, yeah, add in some from a different era because it's it's based in like um, yeah, it's nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties New York type time when you're Indiana your archaeolo- Jonesy, archaeology. Kind of it's only in a Jonesy, yeah. Mm. Um, and so obviously there's plenty of Things you could add in Indiana Jones, you like for that. They've done it. I'm um, just looking now. He's like uh, re-implemented it as a roll and write set more in the above. Yeah, the low crystal kind of miners. Area. It's yeah, not, not quite really, the same, though. not yeah. really at all. No, <laughs> doesn't do. Um, it's not even. It's not the same theme. It's not the same mechanics. I don't know why they say it's re-implemented. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be really nice to have a little mini expansion for Artifacts Inc. I could have sworn I used to own this game, but I, I don't think I did. Looking at the pictures, I'm like, I don't remember this. I, I think I must have had it on my wish list for a long time and just never got around to getting it. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I did have a phase where I was just like, I'm going to get all the Ryan Lockett stuff. I'm going to get all the Red <laughs> yeah. Ryan stuff. Uh, and then I, I quickly realised the folly of that when I actually didn't really enjoy half of them. So I was just like, oh, I might give up on that particular rule. Yeah, yeah. You have to have to know if you like them. But yeah, this is, this is a nice one. Mm. It's worth playing. And then, um, Sam, your, your obvious one. Yeah, so drinking game. Uh, drink now, folks, because Clank <laughs> is getting another mention. Um, <laughs> I would legitimately like another expansion for Clank, and by that I mean Sunken Treasures style. Uh, and I want I want a classic. <laughs> I want another double-sided board, maybe another mm. little twist on... Like they, they, they started doing those little bubble pack ones. Where yes, they, they did, well, I say they? they started, they did one. They did the gold and silk. And I thought that was a really clever way of doing no, an expansion. No, they did too, only, they only did one of the bubble pack ones, didn't they? No, they did two. Wait, hang on. Are you missing one, Sam? Oh, no. No, I don't think I'm missing one. I'm just probably misremembering one. Oh, okay. Um, so it was spiders and... Oh. Spider and um, gold and silk was the Gold and silk because it was dwarfs on the back mining. Tem- oh, Tem- oh Temple was... of the Ape Lords was the other that's one. It. But that's it. Yeah, so Temple of the Ape Lords was a li- yeah, essentially the same kind of thing, right? But it had a, it had a sort of bigger fundamental component element to it, I think, with the the, mm. the the tiles that change the paths and stuff, which is also very cool, and I like that. Um, but they have they sort of dropped it as soon as they. It feels like as soon as they did Catacombs, that's it. Mm. All support for Clank has dropped. That's it. It's done. Even though Direwolf have now got the rights back for. You know, printing it all themselves. I'm hoping that means that they've now got some stuff they're going to do right. with the original yeah. pack. But I've got a feeling they're going to spend all their time now on catacombs. Do you, yeah. Do you think they've spread themselves because they've got the the legacy ones as well? They're yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, they're thin focused. On... Yeah. They're focused a lot on legacy two as well. To be fair, yeah. Uh, yeah. that one I'm very excited for. Um, I'll be honest. I've played catacombs again uh, recently, and yep. I'm done with it. Um, I, I'm I, I'm kind of done. Have with your it. fun. Uh, and... Yeah, no, I'm not. I, no. I like it, but it's just it's clank, but too long. It's it makes it too, too long. long. Yeah. It's, not, it's not about too an hour long. longer to play. I I taught and played clank base game in ninety minutes to two people that have never played it before. Where catacombs, you're talking two and a half hours in the same situation. Um, yeah, and it's also yeah. really really hard. And I don't mind that. That's fine. Um, but it's not much fun when everyone's basically dead and we're all on zero points, or one person got into the pink bit. No, at least you get your thing. You know, it, it's just it's something. <laughs> I, there's clever bits to it. I like the tile. You know, where it got the cards that come out and it says rotate the tiles in the dungeon, and those kinds of things are very clever. But yeah. I don't think it's got. It's not got the charm for me of the original Clank. Um, yeah. So I, I just really want them to just just one more, just one more dip in the Clank ocean, there, please. Give I me, think give me one more go. I, I kind of wish they <laughs> revise the original Clank, like a second edition, because like Catacombs came out when they actually redone some of the cards and uh, kind of nerfed them or buffed them and things like that. And I think like the original Clank could benefit from that, um, mm, just yeah. a revision on yeah. the rules, revision on some of the cards, release it. Um, as a second it's kind edition, of a sim- a simple, as simple as just um, kind of even introducing a new market item, um, 
Mm. Uh, maybe a twist on the kind of artifact thing or something. You know, there's, there's easy ways I think, and, and that's why Clank's such a it's such a good foundation for being able to build yeah. on. Um, and they've started doing that really well, and then it yeah. just dropped because they did the legacy one, and now they're doing another legacy one, and they did catacombs. Um, mm. Space has also got dropped. You know, space has has basically died as well, as far as I can tell. It had its two expansions, and now that's dead. <coughs> um, yeah. So I, I I just really the the excitement I had for when they'd go oh there's a new map pack for for Clank it was just like oh can't wait can't wait um, and it's not like like gold wasn't so good but the the spider silk one that's one of the ones I regularly play um, the sunken treasures I love I regularly play that so I, I I think there's more stuff that they could discover with Clank and introduce with Clank with the base game um, yeah. yeah. Format rather than the catacombs format, um, but I don't think we're going to get it. But that's what I would love to have. Yeah, definitely, definitely. No, right. So now we're going on to the second bit of this. Is basically uh, other stuff, nerdy stuff we've been um, doing through the year that's not board gaming related. And um, so TV shows, movies, books, video games. I know Lewis loves that terminology, um, but. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to start with TV shows. And um, I'm going to start with mine. And I've got two. I mean, Last of Us was, I think, was one of those surprise hits um, based on the video game. Never played the video game. But um, the the show was a big hit that even the wife enjoyed it. Um, When I first put it on and said to like, she was like, oh, has this got zombies in it? I was like, yes, but give it a chance. And we gave it a chance, and she really enjoyed it. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to season two coming out of that. Uh, my really big one, and I absolutely loved this series, and that's Picard season three. It was yeah. like a swan song so to the fans. It was mm. everything you wanted to see close out in like the next generation. You had all the crew members come back. Sorry, spoilers. Um I don't know if if you've not seen it, they bring back the ship. And it was so exciting. And I was just like, I was just like in pieces and just like, this is brilliant. It was everything I wanted. Like the first two seasons yeah, it was were real great, fantastic. Was good. Yeah, it was. Uh, the first two seasons are good. I mean, season one is, is good. I kind of lost track of the story a bit. It was a bit weird and that. Um, oh, I season, like season one. Yeah, season two was yeah, that kind of old tripping back to the present season day. Season two now. was wacky. I would just yeah. Um, and it still, it paid a little bit of fan service there, especially at yeah. the last episode. Um, mm-hmm. and then season three just knocked it out of the park, and I was just like, "This is amazing!" And the certain things they did, um, I was just great, and uh, I actually want to watch it again. Um, and I never really do that with TV series, but I could actually just watch it again and enjoy it, enjoy it all over again. So, um. So yeah, if you're a big Star Trek Next Generation fan, you you do need to watch this season. But, yeah, um, it's a real homage to the it definitely Next was. Generation. Mm. Um, really good. Which uh, leads on to the next show, one. <laughs> leads, yeah, leads nicely in. Uh, mine was uh, Star Trek Strange New World Season 2. So uh, spinning off once again Star Treks. Um, Get a I love this series. Get a room. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, I guess yeah, the clank and the, the star is great. Um, yeah, Star Trek: Strange New World season two was I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. It just got better and better and better. Um, there were some absolute cracker episodes. The musical episode was so funny. It was so well done, <laughs> just hilarious. Um, and the overarching uh, the arc story across the whole season was really good as well. Um, yeah, it's just going from strength to strength. And they've just announced they've started filming season three now. Now the writer strikes are over in America, so they've started the filming mm. of that. Um, and the new, um, so Discovery season five, I think, it's already finished wrap, wrapped the filming. That's coming out in March or so. Um, but the new Starfleet Academy series, they've started filming apparently as well, or are due to start very soon. So yeah, even more stuff to come soon. But yes, yeah, Strange New Worlds season two. I and I didn't brilliant. realize they're doing another Chris Pine Star Trek movie number four they've well, they've been trying. using that for yeah they're, <laughs> they're saying for a long time they've been trying to do that and it keeps missing it and they get people the directors drop out and they can't get the script and all oh, right and chris it's been... wants too much money oh does he 
they well, keep I think claiming it's, it's, they're going to do it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, a, a combination, isn't it? Because all of them have become more popular and yeah, and yeah. command a higher rate now. And um, you know, it's it's just a, a cumulative affair. It's just a bigger budget film, and I think they, no matter how popular they are, the films have never actually generated the income that they needed at the box office to justify an immediate mm. rubber stamp. Um, yeah, it's always been yeah. just enough to be successful, and it's never quite enough for investors to be like, "Yep, yeah, okay." How much do you want? Fifty million? No problem. Um, it's never quite enough, is it? No matter how much we all like. I mean, I love yeah. Beyond. I was really just. Uh, it's a shame they didn't get to go a bit further. Um, but I think they will eventually. But it's <laughs> will it will it be a bit too long before they manage to do it? I don't know. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, but then they they did it with um, uh, Indiana Jones. They managed to <laughs> a thirty year gap or something between films. So never say never. <laughs> I mean, I mean, even other than that, I would uh, going back to Picard. There's mm. like what they built at the end of it, and what like the last epilogue yeah. bit was is like they so need to do a series now with this. Yeah, absolutely. I would absolutely <laughs> love that. The next next generation of Star Trek kind of thing. It's just amazing. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, a lot of Star Trek stuff. Well, I think we might just turn into a Star Trek podcast at this rate. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. I'm coming in with some heavy non-Star yeah. Wars, Star Trek stuff now. Um, I've actually got a couple of. I've only I've only put one thing. I've only put one thing in there. But there are there's so many shows that I've really enjoyed this year. It's mm-hmm. been actually a really good year, and I think that's because Apple TV has matured so well. Yeah, there's so yeah. much good stuff on Apple TV right now. Um, For all mankind, watching season four of that right now, it's fantastic. Um, Slow Horses. I haven't mentioned that. That's an amazing show on on. Uh, Apple TV as well. Um, the Ted Lasso had its last season this year. That's an, just the best. Just love Ted Lasso. Uh, but my pick goes to Silo, which is uh, the sort of a post, not post-apocalyptic, but it kind of post-apocalyptic-ish mm. kind of thing where mm-hmm. uh, human you know, humankind is seemingly limited to a single um, what looks like a missile silo that's been converted for human habitation. Mm. And it's a big old mystery of um, you know what's going on, and I love it because I've read the books, and I can't wait to see what all my friends who have not read the books, uh, their all their theories are uh, of things happening, uh, and it's just fantastic because obviously I know what's happening. Um, Is it just the first point. book it's based on? No, it's the about a third of the first book. Oh so really? Oh wow! The, the the series ends about a third the way through, uh, or at the end of the first act of mm. the right. first book, really. Um, or I suppose, well, about halfway... No, that's a bit unfair. Probably about <laughs> halfway through the first book. Um, it's like a... Without any... Just trying to give away spoilers. It's a very pivotal moment right at the end. Um, right. And that's like the kind of... An end of an act, essentially, in the book. And then I'm guessing the next season will be, you know, what transpires from that. Um, but I know where it's going. And I'm re- currently reading Dust, which is the third in the series now. So I should be completely up to date with what everything is um mm-hmm. by the time the next season comes out um even the second book called shift uh that one is interesting because it's kind of a that one kind of goes into the past to like you know when the silo was built mm-hmm. um so you kind of get an understanding of what you know how it came to be uh, yeah, and yeah. also more information on the rest of the overall world um, with also like so it's kind of like a like a kind of not flashbacks but it's kind of set half of it is set in the past and half of it is set in broken up through time um, and I'm not going to say any more about it but yeah it's, it it means we got what it seemed like a very popular show but it's going to get a lot better <laughs> is basically what I'm trying to say um, so yeah and again like you said um, Joel with the Last of Us I've, I haven't w- finished watching the Last of Us I've only watched the first couple episodes um, Megan my wife didn't get on with that as much. But she she was the one that wanted to stay up till two o'clock in the morning reading, uh, watching Silo. She was the one, one more, one more, wow. one more. Yeah, um, yeah. So for her to enjoy a sci-fi show like that was quite a thing, um, which mm. is probably why I picked it. She Definitely. also loved For All Mankind as well, so if that's a good selling point, For All Mankind, if you haven't watched it, is it also superb and well worth watching. Yeah, I, I think I, after in the new year, I'm going to um, find some cheap or like three months free of Apple TV because there's quite a lot on there I want to see. Um, mm. So yeah, I'm definitely picking that up. Um, mm. 
and it actually you might as well just go onto the books um, because your TV relates to the books that I put down here and after you mentioning the books I've been listening to Wall and Shift on Audible and just being gripped cool. all the way through mm-hmm. um, Wall was amazing it was just like as actually right at the beginning I thought oh that's oh, I didn't expect that I didn't expect this and then it carried on and it was just like ah okay so this is this is this and then it goes into shift and I went straight into shift and it was like okay this is like I didn't expect this I was expecting to carry on from the first yeah. book and it didn't it's a prequel um so <laughs> and I was just like I didn't know whether I was going to engage with it as much but no nah, it got really really good and again some twists in it that I was like wow so yeah. um so it'd be interesting to see what the TV series does. Um, but yes. Yeah, it's fantastic. Nick, do you want to go on with your book? Yep. So my book is um, The Expanse, which I think I mentioned back when I finished reading it um, early this year. Um, so this is, this is the first book of the um, many books of The Expanse mm. series. The Biathan Wicks. Uh, in the, yes, Love Arthur yeah. Weeks, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is by um, James S. A. Corey, is the author. Um, so I have the first three books. I've only, only read the first one so far, um, just finding time to finish the rest. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. It's very, very well-paced book. Um, it follows the, the TV show that was on Prime, um, actually follows the books incredibly well, so closely to the books. Um, as close it as just, they could, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It was. It was a joy to read it. I just really enjoyed it. Um, mm. I. I don't know what it, how it would be like if you read it first if you hadn't seen the TV series. Uh, but I've heard other people have read it and absolutely loved it as well. Yeah. No. I. I read Leviathan um, Wakes first, and then. Yeah. Then the TV show came out, and um, yeah, it was the TV. To be fair, I thought the TV show was better than the first book. Um, right. But that was because the first, like James S. A. Corey, is actually two guys. It's not one. Um, oh, okay. it's, like, yep. it's actually a writing partnership and it feels like the first one oh, how when, cool. you, when you read the second one you can sort of you, you get the idea that they, the first one was very much them learning how to write together in this way and then the second <laughs> one the third one it feels well, like you, you can't even tell it looks like one voice they've got, yeah. like, they've, they've got it all nailed but the first well, one were they alternating the characters because the, the book of the first book is basically just two char- from two characters point of view and it keeps switches every every chapter yeah it might be I, I don't know quite I whether they, they did, did do it that way but it, it would make sense yeah. for them to say right mm. you do you do Miller's side and I'll do yeah, yeah. Um, Holden's side or whatever. Mm. Um, but yeah, it is really good. I love the fact the first book is almost like a murder mystery. Um, it's almost like detective yeah. noir yeah. in the first book with sci-fi. Yeah, sci-fi it's, detective it's noir, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really good. And that's why I loved the first series of the show as well because it it, yep. it carried that through with um, what's-his-face that played M- Te- Detective Miller. Um, I thought he was fantastic in the role. He was really good. Mm. Yeah, it's so good. They they got the casting spot on. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's just brilliant. Yeah, the yeah, whole thing was really good. So and yeah, the whole so series that was, is great. That's my pick. I actually I actually finished the whole series this year. So I finished finally oh, cool. finished the very last book this this year as well, um, which is a great way of tying it all up as well. It's nice. Cool. Yeah, it's a shame they won't get to sort of do the full series. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, such as it life. Was, the sixth series they did do was was. Very good. I yeah. think they rendered it out nicely. Yeah. To be fair, I could see it getting knowing where it goes. I think it would get very expensive for them to do any more. So I think they just <laughs> right, <decided>, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's just stop here. Yeah. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. So, what was your pick, Sam? Uh, mine uh, is a book called Venomous Lump Sucker, which I can't remember if we talked about. It's a great I think name. We may have mentioned it before. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of kind of quite light-hearted. It won the Arthur C. Clarke Award this year, which is the um, the sort of premier prize for science fiction um, and it's it's it is funny it's a it's a funny book but with an important message as well um, it's kind of like a, a satirical comedy take on um, the destruction of the natural habitats of this world basically um, in a sort of not too far in the future where companies are just allowed to rip the planet apart um and the and the world governments have kind of introduced a credit system where they 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 have to buy credits or or they're limited to a certain number of credits or whatever um for wiping out uh uh wiping out species 
you know, making species extinct. Yeah. Uh, and there's people whose job it is is to kind of assess, you know, they basically have, so a mining company, for instance, would say, uh, we're going to go and mine this bit. Um, and then whoever, you know, the scientists that are sent there go, yeah, okay, that's the last species of this mm. type here. You're going to wipe them out if you mine here. Uh, so they have to then spend credits that they've got for, you know, they only have a certain number of credits that they can buy, but it always becomes like a, the credits become like a kind of black market, not black market, but like a, a new economy within world industries. Um, so it's just a, a, a kind of take on corruption in yep. overall the system. You know, we try and do good, but we make it worse because now they can just they just say, yeah, we're going to spend these credits to wipe them out, and the credits become like this weird um, traded stock essentially. Um, mm. And I'm not going to go into any more of it, but it was it was really really fun to read and it's quite short but it's genuinely yeah. <laughs> really funny um and, really interesting. but also quite scary as well because you think yeah you could kind of see this stuff happening um which is a bit <laughs> yeah, weird yeah. um yeah oh, i might have to put that on my list as well it, it is it is very good and it's, <laughs> it's a short read and it's but it's one of those that kind of really it's one of those i, I often find myself when pages? i've got a book like this i'll be reading it until two o'clock in the morning um because i just can't yeah. stop reading it and this was one of them mm. And thankfully, it was quite short, so I was finished in a couple of nights. <laughs> but, oh, three pounds on Kindle as well. Oh, yeah, it's worth every penny. That's so tempting. Yeah. Cost me money. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to quite find tough. out on Audible, but Audible's just crashing on me at the minute, so I don't know what it's doing. It won't let me search anything. Oh, yeah. It is on Audible. It's a great name as well. Venomous yeah. Lump Sucker. I was just like, what on earth? <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> it, is, uh, it, is, it is brilliant. I'm not. I never actually googled whether it's actually a real thing. I don't think it is. But um... oh, the fi- whether the fish is a real thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think it is. But I think it is just a. Uh... No, it's the first oh, thing. No, comes there up is, there the is a there is a there is a type of fish called a lump sucker. So <laughs> maybe. Yeah, but it's not maybe. a venomous one. I don't think so. They are an ugly little bugger though. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it was, it was very. Funny. Oh yeah. yeah. What a bizarre looking fish. Yeah, I've listened cool. to um, nice. a few Arthur C. Cart books, um, and they yeah have always been good ones. So yeah, Arthur C. Was... Clarke winners, you mean, or the award uh, winners, or oh, or is that award? Award which oh no, so yeah. oh Ned Lumen. This is Ned Ned Bowman. Yeah, um, uh, it was winner of the Arthur C. Clarke Award this year. Yeah, the uh, Arthur C. Clarke books themselves fiction. are quite cerebral. Um, they are. Yeah, two thousand and one Space Odyssey is probably you know, two thousand one is the is the is the mm. most famous one of the lot. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I've tried reading a couple of his because I used to have a series called the uh, Sci Fi Masterworks series, and there were a couple of his his uh, his books in there, and um, they they were hard going for me. Um, but if you if you want like a good list of books, the Arthur C. Clarke, Clarke Award winners is a if you like sci fi, it's probably about as good a list of stuff you're going to get to be honest mm, yep. I didn't realise there was such a thing but um, but yeah listen to a few of his books now but anyway so yeah again Sam has made us listen and spend more money on stuff <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> so movies uh, mine's a diff- mine was difficult because I, I haven't watched many movies from this year um, actually, by and then I actually created a list right at the bottom of the script. If you're interested, of all the movies I oh, should I have watched, um, <laughs> right at the bottom. Um, My word, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. I need to get through at Christmas. Um, <laughs> well, one of them, one of them's not even out yet. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> Which one's that? Yeah. Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire is not even out yet. No, I thought that was on next Netflix. Year. No, I'm no, sure no. It's... That was the what was that? the the um the one that's played the. Not prequel one. It's the uh, it's the the first one of the the younger cast. Um, Afterlife. Yeah, Afterlife. Afterlife. That is on there. But I'm sure someone said that it's just very good. Empire was on Afterlife Netflix. Is good. I mean, you, you can you can watch it on YouTube if you're happy with a two minute trailer. <laughs> 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 it does look pretty cool, actually. The yeah, I, I'm good. really excited for it's it. Really I, I loved Afterlife, so yeah, yeah. I'm all all over mm. that when it comes out. But yeah, so I actually do need to watch um, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Still, um, yeah. What are you even doing recording a podcast? Get your ass over there and watch that film. Uh, this is the problem, isn't it? It was uh, good. I spent too good. much time editing podcasts. Uh, 
Yeah, that's a that's a good now. Christmas movie to watch though. You need to get on the old uh, get on. Christmas. Yeah, that's a good I was movie. hoping my boy would say, "Oh yeah, let's watch that," and he's yeah, no, not interested at all. But anyway, yeah. Um, so I mean, I did watch um, uh, Spider Man uh, in, out across the uni- uh, Spider Verse. That was great. Absolutely love oh, yeah. it. That's the, yeah. that's the one that's um, coming. Yeah, Sky. I was trying to remember what the second movie that's coming out um, this mm. week, uh, this this Christmas on mm. Sky Movies. And it's that one and uh, oh, Super Mario yeah. Brothers as well. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, cool. that's on my list to watch. Um, and Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was a great tearjerker, making grown men cry. Um, so, <laughs> uh, But the one that stood out was Jurassic Park 4D. Um, uh, I mean, you can't go a, wrong with Jurassic Park, really. Yeah. It was well, basically... Was out, was like, oh, really yeah, in 4D. Yeah. Yeah, it it basically was made for 4D action. It <laughs> was just amazing experience, and it was that whole thing. Yes, I knew the movie, so all the rumbling and shaking around didn't spoil mm. anything. It just added to it, and yeah. it just made it great. And I actually did look up why there was a massive hundred foot drop where there sh- kind of shouldn't have been, and so, like it's all over Reddit, yes. like people trying to theorize where this hundred foot drop came from. And they're basically saying it's another pen that had that drop. Um, and so basically the car got pushed over it. Um, but they can't explain how a metre high wall suddenly became ground level for the car to be pushed over. But um, Yeah, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. But anyway, it's, 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 it's Jurassic Park. It's, it's such great. a good film. So good. <laughs> let's, let's not let little things get in the way of such a great movie but... <laughs> or big darlings. hundred foot yeah a big foot a hundred foot drop things anyway but anyway yeah. so yeah very, very nice uh my movie of the year um i i was debating between barbie or oppenheimer and i think i'm leaning towards barbie um which is i never <laughs> thought i would um, Wasn't that but, the whole debate when it was first out? <laughs> Barbie or yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. But I have I've seen both of them, um, and they are both very, very good. But I'm just going to tip it to Barbie because it was such a well produced um, and well scripted film. Um, I think they got all the all the cast were really well cast. Um, yeah, I just I just loved it. It was so good in so many ways. Um, I think Oppenheimer was also very, very good in its scope of what it was trying to do. Um, was was just incredible. Um, so yeah, I pick either one, but I think Barbie just pips it just above Oppenheimer. You have you guys, you can see is it. I was going to watch Barbie with Megan, but she ended up watching it on her own, and now I yeah, I've lost the lost the impetus. You don't? So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I will. I do want to watch it because I need to know what it's like. Um, Oppenheimer, I've seen, really enjoyed. Um, yep. Typical Chris Nolan sort of yeah, yeah. effort. I mean, it's you're, you're never going to be disappointed with a Chris Nolan film. Um, Indeed. But I didn't pick it for mine. Uh, neat segue, because uh, <laughs> I felt there was one more that suited my um, my taste a little bit better, and that was the Creator, um, which was yeah. a relatively recent one from Gareth Edwards, the guy that design um, directed uh, Rogue, Rogue One, One, Star Wars Rogue mm. One. Uh, and this is an original sci-fi, basically, and it was fantastic. Really, really good. Yeah. Um, two reasons it was fantastic. A, the film was really good anyway. Um, really intelligent. <laughs> the effects were fantastic, and it was actually relatively cheap to make as well. It was like hearing the how they wrote, oh, right. they made it and stuff in the in Empire. Um, he he was able to make the effects were just kind of like essentially transposed on real life, um, sort of situations a little bit. Um, so all the kind of characters that kind of like that are robotic or or mm. androidy, um, they've kind of got like androidy bits just superimposed on on them and stuff. Yeah. So it's actually quite it was relatively cheap to do the effects um, compared to like you know Marvel style Disney efforts or whatever. Um, like one of the st- stories was that they he was given something like one million to go and uh, by the studio to just say right go and go and use that as R and D and show us what you can do. Uh, and he came back with us this 15 minute reel of all these different effects and they were like you spent way more than a million we only gave you a million he goes no no we spent about 800,000 <laughs> so wow. something like that I can't remember it was something <laughs> along those lines you know but yeah. it was just like and they were like okay fine yeah okay how much do you need 80 right fine make it um <laughs> it was and it was really good yeah it's really really good 
uh, really good film. Uh, won't say anything about it because you know I don't want to give anything away. But yeah, just really, really nice to see to see some original sci-fi in the cinema again. Yeah, and it be yeah. that creative and that interesting. Uh, just was a joy. Really good. Um, I can't remember what the point was going to be. There was something else after that. But yeah, anyway, but you did add in the other cool. other film onto the list that I can't think now what it was. Um, oh, completely. Gone. Oh, Rogue One. Uh, sorry, Rebel Rebel Moon. That's it. Yeah, I I said Rebel Moon hasn't come out yet, but I've got high hopes. Uh, that was what I put in this in the in the script. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But it has now come out. Uh, or sorry, it hasn't yet come out, but the reviews have come out and. Yeah, that that doesn't feel like it would be a film of the year based on the reviews no. I've seen so far. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. what I was because I saw you put that on the list, and then I saw then some like it being panned. I was just like, oh, and then Sam's taking it off his list. I was like, oh, yeah. he's heard the same stories. Then <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still going to watch it, and I'm still got. I'm st- I mean, it's a um, uh, what's he called? The guy that did three hundred. Um, oh, Scotts. Uh, um, he did the he did the the super latest Superman you know, Supermans and all that sort of stuff, Batman v Superman and all that sort of thing. Um, oh, Spin Spin. Um, Zack Snyder, yeah, Zack, Zack Snyder. Snyder right. That's it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I think the the best review I've heard of it was if you like what Zack Snyder does in terms of visuals and stuff, um, then you'll like this. If you don't like it, you're not going to like it because it is exactly what you expect. It's kind of shallow in terms of plot and development but it's all very glitzy and very shiny and spectacular and whatever so um yeah i've still got hopes that it, i'll enjoy it as opposed to it necessarily but it certainly doesn't seem like it will be a uh, it will be a, a film of the year kind of affair it felt like mm. it was going to be seven samurai in space and it feels like it's almost exactly that in a very derivative manner so yeah we'll see but you know, it's got a good cast. It's got some spectacular looking effects and action, and it feels like it's the right kind of film for Christmas time. You know, get after Christmas. Yeah. You've got quiet afternoons. Whack that on. It's Netflix as well, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. yeah, and it's part two. It's part one of two. The second one comes out in April, <laughs> oh, so right. it's not that like you have to wait very long to see the whole thing. Yeah. Then there might be some more context mm. about it. You know, you never know. Yeah. Um, or what's typical is that Zack Snyder will get like a four-hour director's cut released as well. So, you know, <laughs> yes. um, we'll see. But yeah, the creator though, to my original pick. That's when that comes out onto streaming. Highly, highly, highly recommended. Yeah, I want to see it. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. And last category, and it is the video game category or apps. It's up to you. Or computer you games, it. if you're listening. To <laughs> computer <laughs> games. So I don't know where this cough has come from. <laughs> Typically, it started today. Um, so, two things. Marvel Snap. Yes, I mentioned it last year. I am still playing it. This is the longest playtime I've had of any app game on my phone. Um, and I think it... it it Because it's got the Marvel theme, Marvel mm, slapped yeah. on theme. I don't think I would have still be playing it now, but... <laughs> I've got into it. I'm looking at meta decks and strategies and things like that, and really I sucked just, in. Wow, just really sucked in. That I pay every month for it as just another god's bloody money pit. <laughs> um, sucker, I am a sucker, um, <laughs> and I'm really annoyed. I've not actually reached. So there's a, a ladder climbing, um, tier climbing mm-hmm. strat to it. But I've never reached right. 100 infinity on it, and I just I get to a plateau of like level 85, and then I just seem to be going down again because I lose too much, and then I'm trying to build myself back up, um, and then when it gets to a new season at each the beginning of the month, you get knocked down 30 levels, um, and so you have to build yourself back up again, and this this month I'm doing a lot better. Until tonight, because they changed a couple of my cards with updates, and now I feel like my deck is ruined, and I'm really oh upset. no, oh. and I've got I'm, I think I'm 88, and I'm just like oh, you're kidding me, aren't you? But I'm I'm still trying to figure out whether my deck is still viable, because um, it was like a, it was a it's a slow climb. So uh, basically, like um, when you play the game, there's always like one cube. 
and cubes are what give you rank, gets you up the levels. And then um, if you win a game, you'll get two cubes. Um, or you can back out if you think you're going to lose. So then you'll win. If the person backs out, you'll get a cube. But you can then snap, which is a gamble. Because if you snap, then it doubles the cubes to four cubes at the end. And if the opponent snaps, then there's eight cubes for up uh, for the keep. Um, so, but it's that gamble whether you're going to win or not. And usually, when people snap, it's like, oh, they're going to win. Right, I'm backing out. Um, so, one of those. Um, so yeah, I've, I don't know. I've nearly got all the cards as well of the old old series. Um, I think I'm yeah. one away of collecting it. Um, they're still bringing out new cards, but they're just like nothing. I'm not really bothered about them. It's just like there's an old set that I wanted to collect and I've nearly got them all. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know how long I'm going to play this. So I'll just see. But it is a great game just to pick up, have a couple of games, lose, and then put it down and think, oh, there's two levels I've lost now. So, but anyway, <laughs> but my main surprise of games is the simulator games. Um, yeah, especially power wash kept for you. simulate. Yeah, I've Good wasted too much washing. time cleaning stuff <laughs> <laughs> and rebuilding cars. Uh, Amount of times yeah. I've just like I've been undoing bolts and putting new bolts on, new parts on. <laughs> it just um, it's a time waster, absolute time. <laughs> but I love it. I don't know why I love it. I I think I need help, but I do love it. It probably just it doesn't require any thought, so you can, your brain can just switch off. And it you doesn't. Can enjoy. Um, the what car simulator, about people, car washing. I think, I think the car washers in the world are going to have a word to say about that. Like, oh, it's not yeah. like, no, 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 no. I'm not saying they're they're, they're not <laughs> spending a lot of effort, but, but doing it at home. Did, on the did, Devil, Devil's did, Advocate. There was it, car mechanic simulator. I was actually quite yeah. surprised. Like, like putting stuff together, I just thought it's all. Oh, it's all it looks all the same. It's like just in random places on in different places on different cars and things like that. And then I was actually doing work on my own car. I was like, oh, that's that part. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> so that it's part. teaching you as well. It did. And was, I was, that, actually that when, my... was that when the lorry ripped the front off it? You could see all the bits. Yeah. Yeah. No, actually. <laughs> I was trying to change a light bulb and it took me two hours because it was us. Even my brother, my brother in law's a mechanic for Skoda and he actually admits, yeah, they're a pain in the ass to change. Um, and I was actually telling, I said, oh, I knew this, I knew that, I knew, I, but just from playing the video game, I knew what parts were there. Uh, and he was like, oh, wow, I might get my apprentices onto that then. Uh, might teach them <laughs> something. <laughs> um, so there's that. But just lately, with the VR, the Quest 2, they released Power Wash Simulator VR. And oh my God, this should have just been on the VR headset in the first place. <laughs> I am cleaning houses in twice the time as playing it on console. <laughs> it is so much fun. So and I'm good. just stood there. I, I, I think my in-laws are living with us at the minute because they're in between houses. And they must come down and I'm just stood in the lounge kind of waving my hand in the air. They're just doing stuff. But it's because it's, it's got that freedom of like, like you would normally do with a power washer is you're just waving it across yeah, yeah. and cleaning the surfaces where like trying to do it with a joystick, uh, well, um, controller and things like that. You kind of kind of got that kind of waving, but then it goes squiffy and it's like, no, bring it back. I need to clean this spot and you're trying to repoint it. And it's just like, yeah, this is how it should be. <laughs> and what really makes me laugh is like the other frustrating thing is like trying to get on top of stuff to clean on top of things like that. You need to put ladders up or steps up and climb the ladders and then you have to try and reposition the ladders. This, it's got that teleporting mode. Sam, you know, like in certain games, oh, they just yeah, have that yeah. Yeah, point where you want to teleport. So I was just like, oh, I just point and teleport onto the roof. Why is there a ladder? I don't even need the ladder anymore. <laughs> I just teleport around everywhere. And then I'm just cleaning everything. It's like taking half the time to do stuff <laughs> and it's addictive still and i'm just like spent yep. way too long already cleaning stuff um and it actually seems to be more oh what's the word um like you get to a certain percentage on a part and then it was like yeah you've cleaned enough yeah it's all clean and then the console version you like had to get it down to like 99.9 percent .9 clean 
before it said, yep, yeah, done. In this, it wow. seems to get like to 90% and say, yeah, it's clean. I was like, why couldn't the console version do that? I spent so yeah. long trying to find a spot <laughs> that I hadn't cleaned away just so it say, yeah, 100%. Oh, so Something it tells me like, that's oh, to do with the fidelity of the VR version. You, you, it's impossible mm. to get 90 one percent or something because you just can't get around it probably or something but you, you <laughs> but with the vr set you can now because you can like twist your hand and just move like the sprayer in different directions you're not limited like you are with a controller you the controller mm -hmm. you can only point and then try and prove yourself to the the wall or lie on the ground as much as possible and point that this you've got more flexibility you've got more angles like at some points i don't even need to lie on the ground now to clean stuff underneath i just point the controller upwards and just spraying underneath and then oh yeah That's it's clean so cool i was just like <laughs> this is so easy just more efficient just done this in the first yeah yes it was, it was made <laughs> for it and it's amazing and yes i'm gonna probably put way too many hours into this and <laughs> yeah think what am i doing with my life afterwards yeah. but yeah. Hey ho. Great yeah. stuff. Sam, I am so very surprised with your choice on video games. I was thought it was going to be a a space adventure one, but it's not. No, no. I mean, you might have had money on Starfield. Uh, terribly sorry, you're not going to be winning that bet. Um, Starfield was fun. I haven't even finished it, but I'm kind of done with it. It's that kind of. It, it's proven to be that kind of game. It's quite shallow. Um, narrative is okay. fairly shallow. Um, Baldur's Gate 3 is my pick for a big boy. Uh, I've only just started playing it, but I can already tell it's a superior game in most respects. Um, it's D well, Baldur's Gate is a is a D and D adventure game, obviously. Um, I remember trying to run Baldur's Gate 2 years ago on my PC when I had one, and it was a laggy POS. Could not play it. I remember buying it and just thinking, this is just. A waste of my time. It was it would it was that very jerky mm, 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 kind of thing. It's just yeah, impossible yeah. to play. Uh, yeah. Um so but everyone said, Oh, Baldur's Gate 2 is an amazing game, one of you know, my brother in law's favourite game, all that sort of stuff. Um so I bought Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, there was a little hack thing that you could do if you bought it from the Finnish um version of the Microsoft store, you could save yourself about fifteen quid. So I did that. Yeah. And uh yeah, it's so far it's yeah, really good. It's D and D video game. What more do you want? Um, I can't really say more about it because I haven't really played enough of it. So my other pick is the game I've probably spent the most time playing, like you did, Joel, with Marvel Snap. For me, it's a game called Golf Blitz, um, which is um, there's loads of little kind of duck away golf games on on um, on app stores, uh, but this one in particular struck a chord because the years and years ago, one of the first on my iPhone when I had one years ago, um, the first one of the my favourite games was a Super Stickman Golf. Brilliant game. Really, really yeah. fun. It's just a little stickman whacking a ball around and you've got to you know, do it either as quickly or in as few shots as possible. Um, Golf Blitz is the same sort of thing, but it's multiplayer. You've got four people playing, up to four people playing um, on a single in a single match all at the same time. You've, uh, there's three different special... You know, there's multiple different kind of holes, styles of holes, and there's water holes and um you know like spacey style ones and like dungeony larvery ones and all sorts you know all sorts of arenas basically uh and uh you also have th each round you've got three special power balls as well so you've got sticky balls or quick balls or heavy balls or warp balls or all sorts of things um and it's just kind of just really fun playing uh against other people in a sort of speed round to try and finish holes um, it's hard to explain. It's worth a try. Um, it doesn't cost anything. It's free to play. You only pay if you want to buy packs and stuff. Um, and yeah, it's just it's the one game I keep going back to. Um, and also, it's the one that I can play a couple of rounds of while I'm making a cup of tea at work and that sort of stuff. You know. Yeah. Um, it looks hilarious. It looks great. Yeah, it I love is the, the artwork. Fun. And yeah, the artwork's really very, good. The sound is really good. The, the mm. music is fun. Uh, the other thing I love is you communicate. Purely in emojis, which is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and then animated emojis, which is even funnier because it'll be like uh, you, someone makes a duff shot or gets beaten into yeah, a hole, yeah. and everyone starts hitting the uh, the laughing emoji, or uh, there's like a there's like a poop emoji that you can sort of go ah shit poop poop <laughs> just goes <laughs> kind of thing. 
it's just low it's just really really funny just really it's a really funny game to just sit and just play yeah, you know, yeah. for a you, know, you only play for about 10 minutes or something but it's enough um and you have to probably play for 10 minutes because it absolutely kills my phone battery uh, <laughs> you play it like if you play three or four times in a day your battery's knackered and i've got six wow. percent battery left today and that's because i played it three <laughs> or four times <laughs> but it is, it is well worth a look if you just want something that's like a let's face it it's a, it's a sitting on the toilet type game you know you you've got yeah. yourself a bit of time that you can spend that you want to do something that's not just reading the news <laughs> this is a perfect game for it it's literally like a couple of minutes just playing silly golf it's cool it's really good yeah yeah, I mean, I, I've also picked up Baldur's Gate 3 and actually picked up 1 and 2 because it was like 8 quid for both. I was just like, ah, stick it in. But um, nice. I've, got, I've, I've only... got one more bit of video game stuff, actually, just before we okay. carry on, actually. Because um, I know you're a Witcher fan as well, Joel. Have you heard yeah. they're remaking Witcher 1? Oh, really? So the very first Witcher game, I've not played it yet. Um, it, you can play it on Mac via Steam, but I've not bothered because I thought it would probably be, you know, I don't want to be a keyboard player. Um, but they are remaking Witcher, and I think it's going to be on consoles as well. So we'll be able to play the very first Witcher game as well. Nice. So that's cool. Yeah, definitely. I still need to cool. finish free. I haven't never finished free, but... Um, <laughs> I finished it twice yeah. now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're not, you're not spent wasting your time cleaning... Yeah. Sorry, I've got I've I've got very many cars to clean now. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just as I was saying, I I picked up Baldur's Gate three, and I've only just scratched the surface of it. And yeah, it, it was it, it actually threw me. I didn't expect the dice rolling in it. I just thought it was just going to be uh, like yeah, it's, it's cool that it, it literally is like rolling dice on a D and D. Yeah, yeah, game. So, and you can cool. modify it and things like that and just completely wow i didn't expect that um but yeah it's a massive game i've heard from other people like they've done they've finished act two and they're actually having a break because it's so much game it's basically mm. i think they, they've described it as three games in one and um, it's so wow. big um that they just need a break before they do the third act um so yeah, I've, I've I've barely scratched the surface of it. It's, it has been frustrating because I've had so many crashes. Like I'll be halfway through a fight and then yeah. suddenly it'll just crash. It's been crashing uh, for me as well. Yeah. So it's kind of put a damper on that. They need to sort that out. Um, I think that's also why it was late to Xbox because PlayStation's had it for a while. Um, it's because yeah. they knew there was this problem with crashing, or there's a problem with cross compatibility. I think. Um, well, I can understand that they they basically rushed to try and get the Xbox One out, I guess, and mm-hmm. it's not quite polished yet. I mean, it's had a couple of big patches already since I've had it, and I only had it but like apparent, a week. Yeah, you you need to save and completely come out of the game when you finish for the night, um, because you yeah. could corrupt your. It's the quick file. resume, I think, that's doing it, isn't it? Mm, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I need to play more of it before I even say it's a great, a great it's already a great game, like. It, it jumps you right into the action. It was just like, I've got so many op. What does all this do? Kind of thing. You're like, you bring yeah, up yeah. the menu of what you want to do. And just, <laughs> what? But actually, I, when I, you think about it, it's literally just the options you would have if you were playing D&D. So it's your character powers, um, yeah. your sort of your actions, your bonus actions, and also like the, the kind of standard actions, like, you know, your dash. I mean, at first, I didn't even know what sort of stuff. I didn't even know what bonus actions were. I was like, I've got one action, I've got a bonus. How do I use a bonus action? And it doesn't prompt you. And what's really annoying is that is why is to go to the next character. And I've hit that accidentally so many times because I think that's the menu button for some reason. Mm. And it's just like, oh, sugar, I've wasted the character. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. This ain't going to go well. Um, so, yeah, I need to retrain myself of, like, what buttons to press. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, Starfield just kind of died a sad death on me. It was just like, yeah, I got it bored. Game sort of rinse repeat a little bit. It was yeah, yeah. it was it's good, and I just got but it's just not yeah, it's not enough. I just got frustrated. It's like take off, find a planet, land, take off again. I was just like, oh, I'm bored now. Um, but apparently, there's a massive update coming um, with new ways of traveling and new stuff and. Yeah. Lots of new content, so I don't know. See what that brings for it. Yeah, but. indeed. 
So yes, yeah, so that's that. Hope you enjoyed that little segment. Um, a shame that Lewis wasn't here because I'm sure he would have to moan about certain bits on there. But <laughs> but it would also have gone next... about 45 minutes longer, so probably just as well. <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> And we're uh, going to finish and, this. And 40, 40 minutes of that would have been complaining about video games versus computer games. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Refer to the other Christmas podcast from last year. You'll see why. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to finish up the podcast, we have a ramblings from Nick of a ball game Yay. of terror of, or tale of horror. Yes, a ball gaming tale of horror. Mm. It is indeed. Uh, Tale of Horror. So this is um, the saga of me buying a game off um, Board Game Geek's Marketplace um, the other week, uh, which I've done yeah. loads of times before. Usually, that was it. You're fine. Um, it started off kind of weird because I th- there was a copy of Chicago Express which I wanted to get because it's being reprinted as Warbosh Cannonball by Rio Grande in a different art style, which I don't like. So I wanted the original, the the Queen um, artwork version. Um, and so this guy was selling one for twenty pounds. I thought that was a decent price for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so sent him this message saying, "Is it is it available?" Um, because it, it, he'd been listed for like two weeks by that point, and he sent back within five minutes saying, "Oh, there's someone else interested, but I'll give you first refusal." Which I thought, "Oh, how how is he?" How, that's very coincidental mm. that someone else within five minutes of me sending a message has also asked him when it's been listed for two weeks. But I thought, "Oh, yeah. that's what, must be one of those things." Um, so yeah, we agreed the sale. I paid him for that. Um, he said he couldn't ship it straight away, but he would ship it within a few days. Um, a week went by, and I'd heard absolutely nothing. So I chased him up. Um, about four days later, he sent an apologetic message back saying he, he had some minor life crisis going on, but he would ship it straight away, um, kind of next day, to our 48 hour delivery. Um, and then I heard nothing again for another five days. I sent him another chase uppy uh, message, um, and then he sent me a message back uh, a few days later saying, "Oh, it should should have arrived by now. Here's the tracking link." So I checked the tracking link, which was from uh, Every, which is the new name for Hermes Delivery Company, and they said, "Oh, it was delivered on Tuesday," which was at that point five days before, and they said, "Here's here's a delivery <laughs> photo," and the photo was of the game in our recycling bin. And the recycling bin was emptied the day after that delivery was thinged. So the game has been gone to the uh, great gaming convention in the sky, unfortunately. Disappeared into the ether. The, the, the guys so, are uh, cursing you. They go, oh, this guy didn't even separate the uh, plastic yeah. from the cardboard, did he? <laughs> it's got wooden idiot. bits and stuff in it. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, <laughs> these tiny little trains. Like Don't they know what they're doing here? Anyway, carry yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. So and that so that was the second delivery in that week where every had put a delivery in one of our bins as a safe place and hadn't left a delivery note. Um, That's terrible. Luckily, the other one I just happened to find because I was emptying the other bin, the, the non-recycling bin, um, and I just happened to find it. And then it had been there for like six hours and it was soggy, but luckily the stuff inside was fine. But yeah, this one unfortunately got recycled um, into mm. squashed bits of cardboard. Very sad. Um, luckily, I didn't spend a huge amount on it, uh, but um, there are no other copies of it anywhere near that price at the moment. So, sad times for that game. Um, yeah. At least it made an interesting story for the podcast. There we go. Yeah. But it's pretty much bad luck, that really, isn't it? That's, yeah. It's mean, an unfortunate to... thing. It's quite a f- common thing for them to put it in the recycling bin or, or whatever. But and, uh, I, I'm not. Bad timing. <laughs> I don't entirely mind them doing that, but it's the fact they don't leave a delivery note yeah. saying that they've done yeah, it. Right. Yeah. And so, and I wasn't because I hadn't got tracking link, but tracking link at that point, I hadn't known to even look. I, yeah. I wouldn't come home and think, oh, I better check in the the bin to see if anyone's delivered anything yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a near similar experience with similar thing where um, I purchase off of the Facebook group um, yeah. uh, Terra Mara, Terra Mara. Um, and like it had been a couple of weeks now and I mm. chased because it said on there it was going to be two weeks delivery I was like wow where's it coming from um, is he making it and then um, <laughs> like then I remembered after a while I was like oh yeah it's meant, it should be around about now it should be arriving so 
I went and messaging him and I said, uh, did you actually send it? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, here's the tracking details. And um, yeah. he sent it through to me. And like Nick, I don't know if it was every or not, but um, it said it had been delivered yesterday and left outside. I was like, you're kidding me. It's like raining and everything. This is last year, I think. Uh, yeah. So I went out, looked up and down my driveway and I was just like, Oh, I hope they didn't put it in recycling boxes because that got collected like this morning or the day before kind yeah. of thing. I was like, oh no. So I didn't actually, and I, I remember just putting the boxes out, not actually like opening yeah. them to put anything yeah. else in. So um, I I went back to him and said, I can't find it. We had a bit of exchange. Have you checked this? Have you done it? I said, yeah, I've done the da, 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 da. So in the end, we were like, okay, I'll have to go for the process of claiming it back, but... Um, sorting out a refund for you um, and as we're doing that doorbell goes I went and answered it there's a delivery driver hands me over the parcel and then off he goes yeah. it's just like <laughs> you said you delivered it yesterday <laughs> and then I went back I said oh, oh, man. it's just been delivered now so I, he goes oh that's great news <laughs> <laughs> They do some funny things, those delivery companies. Uh, the things they like, claim that they've done and haven't done. Well, it's like um, Sam was saying when we were having this discussion. It's um, If it's every, they get charged if they don't deliver or not. They bring items back. So I yeah. reckon with my case, he said he delivered it. Um, and then just snuck done it in a the kind next of, day. Yeah, mm. yeah, snuck it in between deliveries on the next day kind yeah. of thing. So yeah. he didn't get penalised. Um that's a really bad way of doing it. Well, no, because it, yeah, it lures you down a false sense. It's just like, yeah. it's been delivered. Yeah. Where is it? I haven't seen it. Is it My favourite one is when they say, could not find location. And <laughs> you go, well, I get I get like two or three parcels a day. Why, why can't you, how can you not find the location? <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah. They can be annoying. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, at least it's, as you said, at least it wasn't a very expensive game. But indeed, at least it, indeed. At least it wasn't that Spike of Stat uh, expansion you've been after. Oh <laughs> man, oh that would have been that would have been so bad. Oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. that would have been true horror. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, anyway, I think that's a show, guys, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I probably need to end because I'm current. I've currently added something to my cart in Zatu, and I sh- really shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it a big box with castles yeah. in it? Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Sam. Uh, You've got have something to, to go yourself. on the tree. Yeah, and well, I, can... I know for a fact I'm not going to get bought anything by my wife that's game yeah. board game yeah. related. So it's just like this will be my little treat, my treat yourself, <laughs> treat, treat to myself. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's when he's he's when he actually wraps it up for himself <laughs> and puts it under yeah. the tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's uh, a good point. Actually, I should, I need to time this so that it gets delivered after Christmas because Megan will go to work and then I then it can come into the house without sneaking. her even knowing yeah. it's there. <laughs> <laughs> she won't notice this huge box suddenly appear. That will know. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, right. So I think it's time to say a goodbye on this podcast. Um, so I like to, from all of us on the podcast, I'd like to thank you all for listening to the podcast this year and the previous years. Um, we have a great time doing this. Um, and I think from Lewis, Claire, Sam, Nick, and I would like to wish you all happy Christmas. Certainly and do. A very happy, yeah, yeah, happy indeed. new year to come. We have some little plans on the horizon for the podcast. Um, and we are looking forward to hopefully bringing them forwards and having more fun, doing more events, and and definitely playing more board games. So playing more games. Yeah. As always, you can find links, dutifully done by Nick, in the show notes of this podcast. And uh, as well. yeah, definitely going to be lots. <laughs> and I hope you really enjoyed it. So happy Christmas from me guys and happy christmas from him (laughs) and happy christmas from those two (laughs) that's one for really older older fans (laughs) (laughs) yeah yep good night everyone and i hope you do have a good christmas good night